What's up? <laughs> What's up, everyone? <laughs> How are you? Hey. Doing pretty good. Oh, we drinking already? Shit. So right. we celebrated by getting margaritas on the way home today. Yay. Damn, nice. Crazy's audio is not working. Yeah, yeah, I got oh, that no. fixed. <laughs> that, that's, you got that's, fixed already? That, yeah, yeah, that, that was in my bad. Okay. Cool. It's, it's not a Circle of Jerks podcast unless if you mess up somewhere. Peach <laughs> trying to silence me. Y'all hear that? No, Ryzen says I'm, I'm seeing a bearded pattern here. That's all right. I have no shame. I will be shaving soon because I am going on vacation. And I do scuba dive, and this is not conducive for scuba diving. Yeah. So yeah. there will be a clean shave and Toxic Killer 50 in like a week or two. Are you you're going 100%? You're getting rid of everything? Yeah, it, for the mask. Otherwise, it the mask won't seal. Mm. So it just doesn't. Uh, it's not conducive. If I, if I want water uh, in my nose for five days, then sure, I guess. But <laughs> well, all... you know, you could rock some cool mud and chops. Yeah. <laughs> just, just... <laughs> also the suntan that's the other thing the suntan is uh an octopus would look at your beard and take it as a challenge <laughs> I, I was about to mention that <laughs> <coughs> cool. mm. so, so how are you doing today toxic do you, you have a good Kid. day today I did have a good day. It was a relaxing day. It was a day off of streaming for me, so I got to do some errands and game on my own and uh, um, eat dinner and do all that fun stuff, and now here we are. But yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> now you're talking about gaming, I noticed in your Twitch profile that you said you have a PlayStation 5 and a Series X. Who, I, I what, what child did you kick to get those? I know, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> like, who did you sacrifice? Yeah. Uh, who did you steal so... them from? Don't worry. Whatever you say I... here cannot be used against you in a court of law. I, I am not a lawyer, them though. From, I didn't steal them from anybody. Uh, so I actually... Um, you guys are going to be really mad at me. I ended up with two Xbox Series Xs. Oh. Um, yeah. So I pre-ordered one on Amazon... And then my console was going to get delayed by like three weeks, which for me was kind of unacceptable. Mm -hmm. um, and I, at the time, we'll get into, we'll get into the full story when we, when we talk about why I started streaming. Um, but I got laid off uh, like November of last year. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I was driving my friend to the airport on the morning the Series X came out. And I knew GameStop was going to have physical consoles in store. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was I just, Dropped my friend off to the airport. I was done at the airport by like 4.30 in the morning. I went to GameStop by me. I was like, well, if there's not enough people in line, I'll, you know, I'll just go home or whatever if, if they don't have enough consoles. Mm -hmm. If they do, I'll stay and I'll, I'll wait and get one. Um, they, I, there was just enough. And I waited from 4.30 in the morning until 10. And then I was actually able to sell my Amazon pre-order to a neighbor across the street for zero dollars above retail so i gave it to him for the cost of the system so that he could have a series x for his son and everything just kind of worked out and then uh my playstation 5 i used christmas money for i got super lucky that i had my phone in my hand when a tweet came out that costco had him in stock and i like the fastest i've ever typed um <laughs> to, to, to get the playstation <laughs> bundle at costco like i i literally was checked out before I didn't even open Twitter. Like I just, I, I like, I clicked the Costco link, went right to the Costco page, had my payment information already saved and signed in, put it in my cart, checked out, put my phone down, ate my breakfast, and just kind of did one of the, you know, hey, we're done here. Like that was, that was easy. Uh, but yeah, I got super lucky. I probably still would not have had a PS5 if I didn't have my phone literally in my hand. Like it was in my hand, and I was like, oh, Costco has PS5s. So, so I gotta ask off the bat, which one's better? Um, side by side, which one do you think has so, longevity? So I, I'm probably the wrong person to talk to about this because I just I'm just a huge gamer. Um, <laughs> I, I will say 
that I enjoy the single player exclusives on PlayStation better. Um, yeah. It just, mm-hmm. it, it, it just is what it is. And I've been an yeah. Xbox gamer for 13 years. So like, you know, it's very hard for me to say that. Um, but there are a lot of things about the multiplayer experience, um, integration with other platforms, uh, ability to game on multiple platforms that like the Xbox just does better and it will probably always do better. Like if I streaming through a PC, if I'm streaming on an Xbox or even I think if I'm not streaming on an Xbox, I can have an, a Microsoft Xbox party open have that audio come up on my stream and be literally playing a PlayStation game. And it, it like it, Microsoft just doesn't care. They, yeah. they could care less about what their platform integrates with. And I've just o- always liked that better about the Xbox. Um, yeah, it, they're, I, I they're both good it. for different reasons though. <clears throat> like, you know, it's uh, I, I, I love that I have both of them. Um, I, my PlayStation gets a lot more uh, game time though, to be honest. Um, I, I like turned on my Xbox for like the first time in a week today, I think. To play um, Cold War because it just happened to be the platform I had it on. <laughs> See, I'm still I'm still playing on my One uh, X, right? I, I just I can't justify going buying a Series One X just yet. I, I just I haven't seen where it's that that much of an upgrade currently. Like I I understand the game, you know, it's gonna take time. But uh, I think if you're not running on a 4K TV, it's a lot easier to wait. Um, if you are like already gaming in 4k, um, it's, it's a noticeable difference. There's almost no load times in any of the series X or PlayStation five games. Yeah. I remember seeing a GIF. Almost no load times. Yeah. I remember seeing a GIF in the GTA five subreddit of someone launching Grand Theft Auto five online on their Xbox and it loaded immediately. That Mm -hmm. was the quickest I've ever seen that game load. I was impressed. Yeah, the load times are insane. Um, the like, I haven't really played around with Smart Resume that much, uh, but like that feature is supposed to be really cool. Um, you know, a lot of the things I liked about the PlayStation were had to do with the streaming. Uh, it's easier to stream on PlayStation a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. They give you a built-in chat overlay, so your chat messages appear on the side of the screen. Not a big deal now because I'm streaming through Streamlabs. But mm-hmm. like, when you're starting out, like that is a really good feature to have because it gets you in the habit as a streamer of like making sure that you're looking at your chat without having to like look away from your screen. So like I, I could, I, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it makes it so that if I'm playing like multiplayer games, like if I'm playing like apex, it's even easier to interact with my chat. Cause like that is super hard to do if you're playing a multiplayer game, but like every time somebody sends a chat message, it pops up on my screen. So like it made it, easier for me to kind of develop that habit so now when i'm playing multiplayer games even if it's even though i'm having to look at a computer monitor it's still like i I, it's already developed so like i can just look down then look back at my game then look down you know and just kind of do the (laughs) up down real quick to make sure yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) i got you like i got i got used to going this way for chat so if i put it anywhere else i'm lost like my chat's not here where'd it go oh it's over here now exactly like (laughs) <laughs> all right, all right. No, I mean, I, I, I would say I have more feelings of, towards buying a PS5 than I did a PS4, mm-hmm. right? Like I still haven't bought a PS4, but <laughs> I, I need to. <laughs> yeah, crazy. But a collector. honestly, the the only thing really, st- I mean, I, I think they've leveled out. Like they're pretty even on computing and graphics at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's but really it, just the games. Gets... Yeah, the fact that I can play the game, I, I can get one game and it can play on my computer and my Xbox Yeah, is the driving so nice. factor for me at the moment. Yeah, well, I think that's a driving factor for a lot of people. Um, and I mean, in, in some cases, you could play those games on your phone, too. It's not just yeah. your, your Xbox and your yeah, Peach computer can. anymore. Peach yeah, is it. yeah I, I do that <clears throat> with my uh, Series X, not my Series X, my uh, One X upstairs. I play for my phone. Mm hmm. Whenever I'm bored, I'll just kick back, pull out my uh, controller, get the attachment on it, and just go. They're both good for different reasons. I'm like the I I like I hate. I'm not a fan of the console wars. Like I don't understand the 
like it just buy the console you want to buy and like leave the other people alone because there's yeah. a reason why they bought the console they bought. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, and it's like <laughs> Peach was a Peach was PC master race until he finally finally got an Xbox. Hey, I'm still PC. I'm still PCMR. <laughs> that, that's never gonna leave me. <laughs> hey, mods, if y'all want to do us a favor, you can drop a poll in the chat, and and we can we can get the war going. Yeah. PC, Xbox. <laughs> I am just like let people game, live. Like, it's PA. just like I open up my Twitter and it's just all like PlayStation people like, oh, this game scored better than Halo. I'm like, who cares? You know, if you... like, who cares? It doesn't matter. You know what? I, I can agree with that. So Rise and speak in my language. Man. I still game on my N64 to this day. Oh my God, yes. I even N64. bought the special attachment so I can plug it in an HDMI into my uh, N64. Hell yeah. Um, fuck, I was going to say something and I forgot. Oh, yeah, Kels, you, you can play on your phone just, like, getting a controller and a little thing to attach it to. So, like, this is how I game all the time if I'm, if I'm bored at work and can't go upstairs. <laughs> when the golden eye hits. <laughs> oh, my God, golden eye. All right, so, Toxic, what got you started streaming? All right. So, um, I got, uh, laid off. We'll go, we'll go in the way back machine. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, July of 2020, uh, my wife and I were tired of quarantining in our 1500 square foot condo. So <laughs> we decided to put our condo on the market. Interest rates were good. Um, we bought a, we bought a single family house, um, in October, I got, uh, laid off due to, due to COVID. Um, I knew I was going to be playing a lot of video games because like, that's always my go-to. I also knew it was going to take me a while to potentially find a job because of the way the economy was right now and how hard my, my industry as a whole had really been hit. Um, so yeah. I decided like November, like right before Thanksgiving that I was going to start like trying to kick around, um, and just make a Twitch account and see what I could, you know, just see if I could kind of make it work. Um, I, I started getting into it. I started realizing, like, okay, like, I actually really like this. Um, I have a background in sales. So, like, for me, um, streaming and the networking part, like, it's like lifeblood for me. Like, I'm really good at networking myself and um, really good at selling myself. And, like, that, that was my job for you know, eight years, nine years. Because so like that part comes like real natural to me. Um and like right around January, like after the new year is when I really started to like hit my stride. So I think I hit affiliate on like January twenty ninth. And then really from like January twenty ninth to now is like where all that growth is coming from. Um and Damn. you know, I, I really just like it's not about the money for me. And as crazy as that sounds, you're like, dude, this guy's unemployed. Like, he's married. He just bought a house. Like, it's still not about the money for me. Um, I, I just really enjoy uh, video gaming and interacting with people, you know, getting to talk to my chat, um, getting to experience games alongside of them. And, you know, it's it just I'm eternally grateful for for where I'm at. Um, I would still like to go back to work, uh, but like ultimately, you know, my dream would be to do this full time if I can. So like, even if I do go back to work, I have no intention of discontinuing doing this. Obviously the times I stream might change a little bit and the days on which I do it might change, but you know, I, I, I am, this is not going anywhere for me. I'm, I'm in this for, I'm in this for the long haul. So. <laughs> hey, you know what? Did Those you pick the up reasons. any, uh, did you pick up any hobbies during quarantine and, you know, being off work? Um, I, I wouldn't say I picked up any, like a ton of hobbies. Um, I, I do make a lot of barbecue in my free time. Um, nice. so like I, I've kind of gotten more time to perfect that. Um, I have a, I have a pit boss pellet smoker and like, Ooh. you know, having all the time not working, I could kind of just like, oh, I'm going to put a brisket in, I'm going to make this or that, or, you know, I have got the time to kind of like experiment with it. Um, so I guess I, like, I perfected that hobby. Um, I, I don't know, like, 
I started eating better now that I'm not working. I like, um, I I lost like ten pounds, which I don't know if it's stress related or eating related or what, but like, <laughs> you know, um, I I was really down on getting laid off, but like, I I would never have started doing this, and you know, I I've met so many amazing and cool people, and. Like, I would never have met any of them if I was still working. Because, like, I just would have been, you know, off doing my own thing and, you know, in my own world. And it, it, it's just sometimes things happen for a reason. And I, you know, I'm I'm right where I need to be for right now, I think. Because every time I try to apply for a job, I don't get it. And, but it's just like my my channel is growing and people are still hanging out. And, you know, so I'm like, okay, well. I mean, what, yeah. What else can you hope for? Yeah. <laughs> well, as, long, well, as long as you, as long as I feel like you continue to grow, it helps you stay around a little longer. Like I think that's when so many people get discouraged is that they don't network and they don't, you know, visit other people's channels and they don't, they don't just play the game, right? Yeah. Or, you know. It's 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 always and then, me 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 and never. How can yeah. I contribute to other people? Like Stubborn right. Quan, what's up, Stubborn Quan? I see you, Kells. Rising. I see you, Kells. Also, thank <laughs> you for your kind words, Kells. I did see that. Um, I appreciate it, I, and you too, NJ. I really appreciate it. Oh, don't and that was I, Rising the, brisket is one messages. thing that I can talk about for a long time. Same, same. Also, I like, I like <laughs> brisket very hard. Also, so. one thing that NJ called out is uh, she, she really liked your the, the message you send uh, in your channel for positivity and inclusivity plus your question of the day, which, yeah. Grant, like, honestly, I, I thought you were already a cool guy, and then I noticed that you started doing, like, the whole positivity and inclusivity thing, and, and that just put you, like, up here from right here. <laughs> well, it's a bigger I, gap, you know, really, but. it's, it's it, for me, it's something that's always super important. Um, I... I struggle with anxiety um, pretty bad. Uh, mm -hmm. I hide it very well on my stream. Um, but, like, you know, uh, you, everybody forgets, like, behind Mr. Streamer Man, Toxic Killer 50, there's still a person who has, yeah. like, very real problems. Right? <laughs> but luckily, like, every single person that is in this chat right now talking <laughs> are, like, amazing, positive, loving people. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we try to surround ourselves with. Well, and that and that's what I try to surround myself with too. You know, it, it's um, I I just be growing up a nerd and you know being in this this world that we all like that is now finally starting to kind of get the credit it deserves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a rough it's a rough time, right? And so like, it, you know, for me, it, it's I would rather stop what I'm doing for five minutes if somebody's having a really tough time and address it um, because they felt safe enough to come in my channel to do that. And that might be the only place they feel safe. Right. So for me, like, I don't care if my whole chat leaves, if somebody comes in with like a mental health thing, like you best believe, like we're going to stop the game and we're going to address it if we can. Like it, it just, because for me, that might be the only place that they feel safe sharing that. And I would feel awful if like, I, I'm not a therapist, but like I, I can still provide somebody a safe platform where they can get encouragement. And that for some people is even invaluable. Yeah. So, you know, it, cause it's important to me because I struggle with those things too. Right. So like, mm -hmm. why, why should it be different for me? You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not special. Uh, you know, I'm just a person like everybody else just trying to figure this stuff out. <clears throat> you know? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Definitely, definitely. Honestly, like, you, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <clears throat> so, let speaking about some speaking about how you like to address people and try to make sure that everyone feels inclusive, especially when you, like, you have anxiety that you deal with let's talk about some of the games mm -hmm. that you play <laughs> mm -hmm. that could cause anxiety so, sure <laughs> first off we have bloodborne yeah right which uh i know we kind of you kind of mentioned it in the pre-stream meet yeah but what is bloodborne because i've never heard of it so it's it's made by um 
oh, is it From Software, the same guys who make Dark Souls? Okay, cool. So it's it's just like a incredibly hard uh, game. It's a third person action game, very similar to Dark Souls, except you're fighting more like vampires and werewolves as opposed to like skeletons. So it's uh, a yeah. little bit more on the we'll call it like blood rain side versus like the D and D side, mm -hmm. right? Where, where where you're fighting more <laughs> traditional enemies and dark souls is a little more on the D and D side, but the game is brutal. It's very difficult. Um, there's limited checkpoints. Mm -hmm. um, if you die during a run, you go back to the last checkpoint, you lose all of your experience. You have to kill all the yeah. enemies. Again. Um, so I, I know I've caught margin, a couple of your streams. Where margin you for error in and... that game is very thin. Um, but it's great because for me, those kinds of games, uh, it's it's rewarding when you make progress. Like, I, I feel like a lot of games now are really easy. So when you play a game that has one difficulty and that difficulty is hard, um, it just kind of makes you, like, appreciate. You're like, wow, like, this makes me feel like the games I used to play, right? Like, <laughs> where there were where there were no save points or, like, you know... You had a hope to God that your mother didn't turn off your original Nintendo when you were going on a really good run of like oh Super Mario God. One, right? Because like God forbid <laughs> you're on like level seven and oh I turned off your console. You're like oh my God I almost beat like why you would know, you like, unplug it? I needed to vacuum. You, you left it on. You don't <laughs> yeah. pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. So like you know it, it just you get that feel for um you know what games used to be like. So I think there's like a nostalgia to it. Mm -hmm. um, but like also what I found is as I've gotten better at the game, it actually is a really fun game, uh, but you have to really give yourself a long rope and a lot of patience because you're going to die. I've for every one successful run I've done, I, I spend hours when I'm not streaming sometimes playing Bloodborne offline, um, just farming through to go and farm potions, to go and farm, you know, what items I need for the for the run when I actually stream it. And it's like two or three hits and you're done. And and, and you really just got to be good at dodging and parrying and all those things where people just skip them in video games now. Like, yeah. the, the from software is like, if you don't know how to block and parry, you're never going to make it past the first level in one of our games. Because it's, it's, you just got to be, it's all timing and, and yeah, it's it's a good game though. I'm not selling it well, but no, 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 no. no. I, I think you're selling it perfectly well because I, I've I've caught a couple of your streams where you're playing this game, and mind you, I, I'd never heard of it until I started watching your streams, and it looks fascinating. It's nice. It's dark. It's gritty. It's difficult, and honestly, some of these some of these fucking kids nowadays need to play a hard game like that in order to understand right. where we've no come more from. participation trophies. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, the, it's it's um. It, they're they're hard they're hard games like i may actually i don't know i haven't decided if i'm gonna try to to go after the boss i'm up to tonight to see if i can Ooh. just start the my next stream at like a fresh level um i've been kicking around whether or not i want to do that um i just i have a really hard time playing games that i'm streaming because i i prefer to have my audience experience the gameplay with me mm -hmm. um even yeah. if it means getting lost or whatever because that's part of that's part of learning and the experience and the reason why we do this. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I always go back and forth when I'm thinking about playing a game I'm streaming off of stream, because for me, I think it, it makes it less authentic because like the reactions you get when I'm playing are literally because like, I've never done it before. So like, I'm not just, I can see that. you yeah. know, I'm not just like, Oh, like I looked at a walkthrough and I, I did all this stuff and now I'm going to do it again on stream on a different save. Like I'm literally when I play Bloodborne, like what you're getting is like that's my first run through. So you're not getting the hundredth <laughs> run through. You're getting the oh, this you're is getting all the, the pain and the misery, right, the pain and misery and suffering. So like there's those times where I'll die for two hours straight, and then I'll have like an hour where I'll okay, like we made progress and we beat a boss, or we don't. Like sometimes we don't. Like it's just part of it. Yeah, no, I get it. Like Puzzled said, when uh, you play a game that you were streaming and you're playing it off stream, you feel like you're cheating your viewers. I understand that. And I haven't touched breath of the wild in a minute. <laughs> so the rising, you just have to keep the, uh, the old ways alive. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. I don't play with a guide on stream NJ, but like sometimes for bloodborne, I'll look up a walkthrough of a level 
so I can understand the the best path to go, where the hidden items are, um, just to make it not it's it's still hard, but like it makes it a little bit easier, right? Like I'm not looking stuff up while I'm streaming, but like on my days off, I may look. Oh, I'm gonna go through and look at this boss fight to see the mechanic, right? And then I'll mm. practice it a few times, obviously dying. So that when I go and I stream it, we're like we know when everything kind of. I think it's part of it's part of doing this full time. It's like I want to be progressing in games, um, but like you know, I I hate not, um, <laughs> I hate not uh not progressing in something. Like for me, that's frustrating. It's more frustrating to not be progressing in it than it is to be progressing in it dude i get that like i i was this close to rage quitting uh mario 64 today but other than bloodborne you've also spent time streaming apex skyrim returnal <laughs> which i haven't heard of uh, returnal is a lot like bloodborne it's like sci-fi okay. dark souls but Ooh, it's a great game it's okay. a good game ps5 exclusive damn it it's yeah. not now i need a ps5 soul storm yeah. horizon zero dawn and uh Nina Kuni? If I Nino pre- Kuni. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> no. I, ju- I just started adding that one to rotation again because, like, playing Bloodborne and Returnal at the same time is a lot like super. Um, it's just like it's too much of the same style of gameplay. So I'm going to probably start rotating Bloodborne and Returnal on, like, opposing weeks or something. Because uh, I still want to play it, but, like, having both of those games in the same week i think it's too much of the same mm-hmm. and for me those games are a lot harder for me to interact with my chat which is like that's my number one um so it also gives me more time to to play games that are a little bit lighter where i have an easier time kind of talking with everybody uh, cuz that's number one for me like the the game i'm playing is less important than making sure that everybody in my chat is engaged and happy and they feel like they're included. And that's, that's my number one priority, no matter what I'd rather lose a game of apex and get yelled at by the person I'm playing apex with, than have somebody in my chat leave because they felt like I didn't like say hello. And like, get, I've I told people completely. that <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> I'll warn that. people in advance. <laughs> I'd be like, look, my chat's number one. I'm streaming right now. So, like, I don't care if we're in the final circle. I might say some stuff, and you're just going to have to deal with it. Like, get <laughs> good. <laughs> I, I get that. I've, I've lost matches of Apex because I was paying attention to my chat. So, yeah. I totally agree with you. Uh, let's see. That's one of the reasons why it's really hard to play. I think to play first-person shooters and be interactive with chat... I feel like if you want to be interactive with chat, you got to be a little more, a little laid back of a game. Like, you know, like Zelda, I guess, was a little easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I honestly, I think as I've done this for longer, you get more comfortable with it. Um, I can. I'm I'm even decent at interacting with my chat while I'm playing like Apex. Like I was playing Apex solo this past Monday because I couldn't find anybody to play it with. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually won a game or two and I was interacting with my chat about nice. as much as I normally would be, which is, uh, you know, I think eventually it's just a skill that you kind of develop at as a streamer. Um, but it, it takes practice. Like that's, you know, I started in November. So we're December, January, February, March, April, like seven months in. It took me seven months to, you know, effectively learn that that skill. I mean, <laughs> you're bad at something till you're good at something, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's, it takes it takes a little practice, you know. It's um, it's not just push the go live button and uh, and then we play. You know, there's there's prep that goes in. Like I I try to get myself into, I wouldn't say the right mindset, but there's a lot of, you know, I go through a lot of mental um mental preparing myself and hyping myself up like before I go live, um to just get myself in the okay like it's time to bring the thunder and you know nothing else matters for the next three hours like you know it, it that's another hard skill to learn you can't let mm-hmm. the things that are going on in your life um good bad or otherwise like affect your content you have to just kind of if you're not feeling up to stream like cancel your stream 
for that day Absolutely. because you know it, it it's your viewers can tell um and if you're not at your best i i think you, it's okay to say like hey I, I can't give you my best today because ultimately your your viewers your followers your subscribers um you know they deserve your best because they're the ones that are taking actual time out of their day their mm-hmm. their life their day their week um to to watch you and support you um so they you know they deserve the the best you have to to give them um so my psa is it's okay to cancel stream if you don't feel well um yeah because... well, you know my heart's not in it today you know? yep. Just, i don't want to oh. cheat you oh puppers oh puppers. Puppers. <laughs> damn i had a question and I completely... Oh. So, you talked about getting hype before your stream. Bring in the thunder. Yeah. So, do you listen to Thunderstruck before your stream? No. Thunder. But I do I do try to, like, when I'm, you know, drink, drinking my coffee, eating my breakfast, I try to kind of just clear my mind of whatever else is going on and, mm-hmm. and just, you know, I I think of my question of the day. I go look up discussion questions try to find something that i think is going to be good um i try to keep them on topic and i use that time to just kind of clear my my head for you know whatever might come up during the day throughout the day uh so that i can i can just give people watching every ounce of energy i have because that you know that's um that's why i'm i'm there is you know we're there to entertain um whether you want to do this for money or not it's entertainment for other people Mm-hmm. So you've got to, you've got to, you know, conduct yourself in a way that that's entertaining, right? And I think it takes it time. People, downer. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it takes people time to kind of find their find their personality. Like everybody has a different streaming persona, right? Um, mine just happens to be really similar to the kind of person I am off of stream. Uh, but like, you know, it it just, um it takes you time to find that. And once you do, you just got to kind of bring it every time. Cause if you're not like, if I'm not upbeat and I'm not in a good mood and I'm not like happy and laughing, then I find that those are the days where I look at my stream summary and I'm like, well, geez, we went from like eight average viewers to two. And then I got to go back and think about, well, what frame of mind was I in? Was it something that was in my control or was it something that was out of my control? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you know, those are those are things that I think kind of differentiate people who want to do this for for a living. It's like, if I have a bad stream, yes, I, I kind of file it away and we just move on. But like, if I have a few bad streams in a row, I'm like, okay, what do I need to fix? Right? Like, it's Twitter poll time. It's... You know, now I, I go to ask people that I know are in there for feedback, right? Because if you don't address problems as they come up, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And y- that you just end up going into the nothingness because you didn't want to, you know, address the small. Usually it's really some small, right? Like for me, it was yeah. a schedule shakeup. Like yeah. I, I changed the games I played and we were kind of right back to normal. <clears throat> Yeah, I know that's like, well, we started doing a a, a questionnaire in our Discord, right? So we, we've we been pushing that. So everybody that's in the Discord has the option to go <laughs> fill out a survey. Yeah. Just because we want to be more suited for the people that are actually around supporting. Like, we want those people, top priority, to be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there are going to be things that come up when you're live that are just going to be out of your control. Like, it's just, like, you... Just can't do anything about it. Yeah, like, two weeks ago, I was doing my Skyrim Saturday, and I got trolled by, like, two consecutive people, and almost a third one towards the end of my stream. And, like, you just... I literally... I banned them. I, I didn't even... I, I, like, gave them two warnings. I didn't even time them out. I gave them two warnings... They didn't stop. I banned them. Then another one came in. I didn't even, I gave him one message and I was like, you gone. Enjoy the shadow realm. Uh, <laughs> um, and then a third person came in and started and I was like, don't even start. Like I've already banned two people today. Like you gone too, if you don't stop. And he, he followed me. There's plenty of people me. in this world. Yeah. He followed me 
and he's been back a few times and we had a really pleasant conversation after that but like he was starting and i'm like no 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 no. like we've we've given out warnings all day um you know but that really can affect your mindset like Mm -hmm. for a stream um but like just don't give those people a platform like i know it sounds awful to like say like you should just ban people like that but you should um you just gotta let them you know it's it's your channel is your business right like that's my business um who i let into my channel is i'm a business owner it's my discretion if you if you're cool like you're welcome you're in right if you're gonna be a jerk if you're gonna cause problems if you're gonna uh, create toxicity or make people feel uncomfortable like you're gone like i don't i don't have the patience for it i'm not you know, I'm I'm in like I'm in my mid thirties. Like I'm not like a eighteen year old kid who's hasn't figured out the world yet. Yeah, like, I'm not here to be your punching bag. You know? What yeah, I mean? yeah like, man. Like uh, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, this isn't the place. You can go to your you can go to your local McDonald's or Arby's or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like you know, it's it's not. It's just it's not. That's not what I'm about. Um, you know, I already spent a a lifetime, you know, getting made fun of and dealing with that crap like i don't gotta deal with it now <laughs> like, yeah. especially when you're the one coming into my channel you know it's not like i'm going into your channel and doing that stuff <laughs> right like i i know that it can get a little trolly but i i do it just to help you provide content and i only oh, yeah. do it to the people that that you know I, i've i've already visited i know sometimes i can oh, jump yeah. the gun a little bit but i, I do my oh, best no. <laughs> but 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 i'm talking about like these the people i had a band they came in and it was just like the most vile uh oh. inappropriate content like right off the bat like it, they didn't even it wasn't even like hey what's up it was just like i don't even want to repeat it it was bad um i'll just leave it like at that. i'll drop an inappropriate okay. movie quote but I make sure they at least know that I, I tailor it to the person, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like when I dropped one in both, I did uh, what Jay does in Bob, Jay inside the Bob Strike Back, where he's like, hey, hey, girl, you ever uh, had this done by a fat man in an overcoat? <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, see, my God. That would be, that would be fine we all know the quote. Channel. Like, that wouldn't bother We all know the quote. It, you know, it, it's, um, but yeah, you like, those are things that are just outside of your control. Like you, you can't control the people who come in and watch, but mm-hmm. if they don't, if they, if they don't follow your rules, you best believe you can control them by making sure they can't speak in your chat anymore. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking about control, I do like, I I have to say your uh, channel points are probably the most creative. It's just toxic waste. <laughs> well so i was waiting for the why toxic killer 50 question so oh. this actually this curtails that i guess really oh. well into that oh all right then. Then, then let's go with this why toxic killer 50 yeah so um my it was an old gamer tag of mine so that was kind of like the first reason mm-hmm. um the other reason is the reason why i'm psn on forgot uh psn name is forgotten tacos is because that was my gamer tag before mm-hmm. that happened to be taken on twitch um yeah i know i was kind of disappointed but then you know as i started to kind of gain a following it's probably better i chose toxic killer 50 because from a marketing standpoint it is a lot easier to market like toxic waste biohazard like that is a way more marketable um term or name i think than anything relating to my old gamer tags like you know because you you, i've got the hazmat crew i have my discord is called the hazmat hangout i've got you know the channel points are toxic waste like Mm -hmm. it's and that's a for people that want to make i wouldn't even say do this full time for people who are affiliates who want to earn money like an extra monthly income it's really important to have a a name or a gamer tag or a, a, ch- a Twitch handle that's marketable. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. And, and, yeah. When I say marketable, it's got to be marketable across everything because you're at its core, right? Streaming is, is self marketing. That's essentially what your job is as a streamer. Like, yeah, like my job is to play video games and entertain people, but like at its core, every stream is like a sales pitch 
right? Mm -hmm. Every time you're interacting with somebody, every time somebody pops into your chat, you know, even if they're not, even if they're not, um, uh, subscribed, like, even if they just follow, like, that's still marketing. Like your, your life is marketing yourself mm -hmm. to the people who come in to your channel. Um, I wish it was more normal to talk about this stuff. I think like so many people get super uptight when it's like talking about like subs or, you know, followers or whatever, but like, mm -hmm. it's okay to ask for subs. You just can't really be excessive about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, don't be ba like, you know, like throw it at like, Hey, we, I would appreciate it if y'all sub, I, I love seeing y'all around, but you know, one or two times a stream don't do it like every five minutes on the dot no. right so, like guys make sure to sub to the channel or else we're not going to yeah. be here tomorrow yeah. also don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel on yeah. youtube you to leave a comment <laughs> on the youtube video so so the way i do it now um i i have a sub goal of one sub per stream it could be mm. a resubscribe it could be a it could be a like a new subscriber. It could be a gifted sub. Um, one per stream is like literally my goal, and I put that in my title. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, from there, um, I have a nightbot timer that goes off. I think every half hour, and all it says is like, if you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing. Um, all the money earned essentially goes back into making channel improvements. Which, like, honestly, like, I use my Twitch checks to buy stuff. I'm not working. So I use my Twitch checks to buy stuff I need. My next Twitch check, I'm literally going to use it for video editing software and a gaming chair. So, like, <laughs> what I say every dime I make of this, like, does not go, like, right now, every dime I make goes into um, stuff that I need to make the experience better for you guys when you when you come in and watch. Um, it, 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 it's the truth. Like... You know, if I had made it, you know, I use my tax money to buy a gaming PC. But if I had used, <laughs> if I had, if I had an, enough Twitch money, I would have used my Twitch money to buy my gaming PC. Like that's literally until I have everything the way I need it. Like all, most of the money I make doing this will go into the stuff I need to to make sure that you know I've got good audio and good video and you know the the appropriate equipment to to kind of make it a fun experience for all you guys. So where did you what what chair do you currently use as your gaming chair and what my, my, chair my, do you plan on getting my, my couch <laughs> your couch my, my, my couch <laughs> I'm my current gaming chair I'm in my living room I actually Honestly, use a that's probably the best chair <laughs> I use a I use a I use a little folding table for my keyboard and webcam and stream deck it's it's very cumbersome um I don't know what kind of chair I'm going to get I probably have like Unless I get a bunch of subs between now and my Twitch paycheck, which is in a few days, uh, I probably have somewhere between 120 to 150 dollars to spend on one. I don't have like I would love a Secret Labs chair, but like I just don't have 300 dollars to <laughs> to go spend on a chair. So uh, my um, chair cost me like 150. Okay, low key on well, Amazon. <laughs> my, my chair was free. I got it out of the <laughs> cons call center dumpster. God they were damn. throwing it away. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> so, so yeah, like, I wish it was more normal to talk about that stuff. Um, I think a, some streamers are like, it's a big no-no. Some streamers are like, eh, maybe it's okay. Um, I've actually found that by putting a one sub per stream sub goal in my title, I actually get people to do that because it's really easy for somebody to come in and say, I can help him hit his goal. It cost me. Yeah. It cost me five bucks. I, I don't. It's not. Like I'm saying like, oh, it needs to be a tier three sub. Like, I, sorry guys. Like, you know, it's like literally a tier one sub is all I'm asking for every three hours. So it's like I'm asking for two dollars and fifty cents because that's you see half of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> every three hours that I do this. <laughs> I mean, when you set a realistic goal, your your viewers are more likely to actually fo try to follow through on that as opposed mm -hmm. to oh yeah, we're gonna get five hundred subs this month. Like, nah, right. we're, and, we and just need 30 baby steps too. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, Hey, if I can get five followers this week and one sub, it, it stacks up after a long time and you go, Oh, well shit. I have 50 subs now. All right. I can aim for two. Uh, 
to it. <laughs> well, so w- somebody once told me that I was talking to, um, he said, like, you should leave your goals where they're at until you can consistently hit them. Mm-hmm. So he was like, leave it at one sub a stream until you consistently hit that, and then you put it to two. And then after that, you put it to three. And then, you know, you just eventually you stop putting it in your title because it doesn't matter but like for those little jumps um you know you just kind of leave it low and then you know in my mind i have i have personal goals i set for myself for like where i want to be every month Mm -hmm. um and you know i don't really broadcast those though uh because there's no reason to i think it's you know I, i i think it's disrespectful to like put your total number of subs for where you're at like in your title because for like a smaller streamer like i think that's super discouraging exactly yeah ultimately it's not it's just not what this is about um it's just really cool i get to earn money doing it um but it's not even if i had i could have three thousand subs i don't have that many but like i could have three four five six ten thousand and for me it still wouldn't be about the money i was earning it would be about the the fact that I get to do something that I enjoy, make money doing that thing that I enjoy and interacting with people while I'm doing it. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with that. I mean, that's honestly probably the most wholesome thing anyone has said here. <laughs> uh, let's see what's going on with chat. What's up, Spartan? There's Scary. a lot of stuff I'm going sorry. on in chat. I'm, I'm sorry that to... you're having an issue with that car man i saw that oh wait prepping for winter oh the scary freeze oh no we lost scary that's oh, right crazy or did i lose everyone no i'm here okay okay you just you got really still and i got really worried so i wanted to get into the speed round next sure let's do it crazy you back yeah i'm i'm here Okay. <laughs> All right. So you, I'm, I'm going to throw a bunch of questions at you. Your first question cool. is always the easiest. It's your favorite color. As soon as you give me an answer, we're going to go. Okay. Okay. And, and if I run cool. out of questions before the 60 second, I'm going to start throwing D and D questions at you. I'm going to prepare you now. Cool. All right. <laughs> favorite color. That's the first one. Yeah. What's your favorite color? And we can go green, green, a dog or cat dog, dog, favorite snack. Uh, sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. Good answer. Uh, hardest game you've ever played? Uh, Bloodborne. Most beautiful game you've ever played? Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, favorite game of all time? Final Fantasy X. Ooh, fa- really? Okay. What is your childhood game? A game that brings you nostalgia? Uh, um, Super Mario 64. Okay. Uh, best D&D class? Uh, um, Warlock. Best D&D version? Uh, 3.5. Opinion on Fortnite? I hate it. DC or Marvel? Marvel. Favorite superhero? Uh, Iron Man. Worst game played? Worst game? Oh, man. I don't... Uh, Worst game ever played? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that one. Time's up anyway. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to really think. I'll get you an answer for that worst game. I'd have to really think about that one. Okay, perfect. Uh, some... Quest 64. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you want to loan me Quest 64 for a while? Or you wanted me to play? Yeah, I still have it. I, it you just never picked it up. Oh, dude, I, I need to get that from you. so you hate fortnite yeah not a fan just don't like it yeah yeah i've never got into it i mean i've played it like twice and i'm just like nah i'm good i'd rather play apex or uh pubg fun fun fact about me i really don't like battle royale games at all um Mm -hmm. the only one i enjoy playing is uh is apex like, I don't even, I don't touch Warzone anymore. Like, I haven't touched it in four months, five months. So it's been... Forgive me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Warzone community kind of toxic in a, in, in a way? I mean, the community is awful, but, like, the game... That's why we send know. Toxic Killer in there. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm not a, I, I just have never, <laughs> I don't know. I've never really liked Battle Royales. Apex is tolerable, 
because of like the abilities and the fact that I feel like it's less of a it's less of like a straight on shooter because like you got the supers and the ultimates and the weapons are a little different. Um, I just Warzone, I just I can't do it. I can't. So um, one thing I read on uh, Reddit, I always read shit on Reddit. I don't know why. It, it was uh, someone kind of explaining why these communities are toxic. It's because the game developers focus more on matchmaking and getting random people matched up instead of matching people on one server and having them build a community. I don't know. I, I mean, it, like, Apex is not toxic at all. And, like, that focuses on matchmaking. Like, it, it, I think it. I think it just has to do with the way the Call of Duty community is now. Um, well, I, if you play I mean, if you play Call of Duty, it, that is not a knock on you. There are a lot of, I'm sure, very nice Call of Duty players, but like the community as a whole I, now, it, I think is just very much into like it, it's just it's super competitive. It's hyper, hyper, hyper. Like, oh, I got more kills than you. Like, I'm better. You know, like you know, it's always been that way. It's been that way yeah. since. Like Call That's of why Duty I stopped World playing it so long. Yeah, I stopped <laughs> playing a long time ago because I I don't know. My mom's been called everything in the book at this point, <laughs> right? <laughs> Since the bringing yeah, of the change, it, which oh my god, it, it, it's it, it's, and I mean, if people want to play Call of Duty, like I'm not against playing it. I I just I choose not to stream it because it it just it makes me frustrated and. I don't really like people seeing that. Like, I could lose an Apex and be fine. But, like, I don't know. Call of Duty just hits different. Just hits different. Oh, <laughs> uh, Spartan misses the online community from 2005. Dude, so do I sometimes. Yeah, so me too. <laughs> it's different. Excuse me. So, so the long-awaited D&D questions. Yes. <laughs> so... During our speed round, you mentioned that 3.5 was the best version. Could you enlighten us? Oh, God. It, it's been I, a long, that was my off-the-cuff answer. <laughs> I haven't played 3.5 in a long time. I've but... never played 3.5. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm our group of friends as DM, and I, uh, we've, we've had other people DMing within our uh, friend group, but I, I brought us into the uh, like, 5. Puzzled who? DMs on Saturdays for yeah. Discord. Hey, oh. Hey, shout out to Puzzled and our Discord. I think the, I just think the, they made it like easy mode now. Like, yeah. It, it used to be a lot more complicated. And, like, not hard complicated, but like, now everything is a lot more forgiving than it used to be in like 3.5. You know, there, there have been rule changes, like, you know, there have been a lot of class changes that make the ways that certain classes play easier. Like, um, I think they little things like in 3.5, if you were a paladin, you had to be lawful good. They took that out. You can be anything except for like chaotic evil, I think now. Yeah. So like, it's those little gameplay tweaks they made to D and D as a whole to like, but I'll go through that like as the audience gets bigger they have to make the rules easier for incoming players but i i also think at every time a rule gets changed like a piece of the game kind of gets lost right because it's like yeah. oh well that was really cool that you had a you had to have a deity restriction to be a paladin like so it's those little things for me that have kind of gone out of the game in in 5e that like I just think it would be really cool to be able to go back to 3.5 to have to deal with some of those additional constraints. Make things I mean, harder for you. <laughs> but, but, oh, yeah. So I was at the uh, the Half Price Bookstore, right? And they literally had the whole setup for the fourth edition. Oh. And I'm just we, like, can can I just buy these and we'll just play a fourth edition game? <laughs> we don't talk about fourth edition here. Yeah, I know, but it's what was there. Three point five is the way. It's either you either play three point five or you play five. Like that's um I've heard I've never played four E, but I've heard awful things about four E. I have I've only ever played five. Yeah. 
I've I, when I started learning the rule set for five five e, I was talking to a veteran player who started playing at three point five, and I mentioned four. He's like, no, we Alan, we we don't talk about four. Four is a dumpster fire trash heap that we will never touch again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it um, yeah, but I mean, I love. I'll play any version of D&D, &D, though. Like, I just enjoy playing it. But, like, uh, 3.5 was probably... That's what I grew up playing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so do you play online, or do you play paper mostly? So I'm in two campaigns right now. I have one on Tuesday uh, that is in person. I play at a local game store that one of my good friends um, owns um and then on thursdays i play uh online with a subset of people who i used to play with in person pre-covid so nice. that is a virtual campaign on roll 20 and um discord on thursday nights okay <clears throat> nice uh crazy nj myself and uh another one of our friends uh we we play on tuesday nights as well on in our discord and Puzzled will be joining us next session. Ooh. I didn't mm. know about this. New blood. Nope. Oh, crazy froze again. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure. NJ is trying to sell uh uh D D to Spartan over here. She's like she's not selling it well. Did did you want to uh, try selling Dungeons and Dragons? For those of us who do, for those who don't know. Uh I would say it's like Every RPG game you've ever played all rolled into one, but like you get to come up with your character in any way that you want. You can make your character act how you want. You can make your character say what you want. You could have whatever personality you want to have. Um, it's just very freeform, a very freeform role playing game. Like imagine every character creation tool for every character RPG game you've ever played. And that's D and D, in a nutshell. You know, uh, I don't know where Puzzled is, but actually, that's one of the things that the D and D we do in our Discord is a lot of newer character, our newer players. I think NJ is the only actual hardcore experienced player in there. Uh, Scary plays, Alex plays, and it's actually entertaining Cage to plays. listen to them try to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Page two, yeah. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> I, I think it could be. I think it's intimidating, but like honestly, once you once you like go through a campaign, it becomes very easy to to play. It's yeah. not, you know, it's it, it, people make it sound a lot harder than it is. Um, I would say that the hardest part is probably the character creation, but like once you make by the by the like the third character you make, you you can kind of. Like you just you just figure it out, <laughs> you know they're they're not they're not like impossible. You either roll for your stats or you do a point by. Um, you know everything is every if you have a player's handbook, you can literally figure out um, D and D and you know yeah, like and and month. you don't even you don't even need to read the entire like no, page or page. Like you the, just need to read the the sections that matter to your character, and yep. then as you go, you just kind of as you create new characters you just kind of become educated in those specific aspects yeah like i'm playing a rogue right now which i've never played before so <laughs> yeah that's you know, fun and i've picked that's, it up yeah, yeah. so what's your favorite class and what's your war like least favorite class um so probably the character i had the most fun playing which i'm still playing but he's not being used right now because i just haven't had a campaign that's at his level um, I have a Hexblade Warlock, which is probably my favorite class I've played. Mm -hmm. uh, my least favorite class I've played is probably a Ranger. Um, I have a story about that, but um, it's my least favorite class I've ever played, and I've only played a Ranger one time, but just not a fan. I don't you know, something about just shooting arrows, and that's it. It just kind of bothers me. I'd rather play a caster. <laughs> <laughs> so... Peach loves his Ranger. <laughs> I I love all the classes equally. <laughs> no, and I um, think a, a bard is the only character I haven't played yet, like class wise. I've I've done all the others. I'm I'm playing a dragonborn uh 
Oh my god, I forgot what his first class was. Uh, something bard. Oh my god, I've already forgotten. I haven't had oh fighter bard, and I haven't had enough levels in bard to actually be able to fully experience it. So I'm I'm st- the jury's still out on bard. But we have a satyr bard in our Tuesday group. And Ooh. Yeah, he's uh. It's their they're a fun class. Like they they're interesting. Um but like I don't know. I just I I I had a college group that made me play a ranger one time and it was miserable for me. So I <laughs> um in in true my fashion, I killed my DM's fi- uh final encounter boss on a random uh nature arrow shot. I rolled three not twenties in a row. Nice. And uh, they, they they never asked me to play a, a a certain character class again. That was the last time. <laughs> uh, like I told you, you I don't want to be a ranger. References. What's up? Wait, that's the bad. That's the guy that got in trouble, right? Charles. Yeah, yeah, James Charles. Yeah, Kells, don't massage young children, okay? Yeah. Oh, so what was your first D and D character? I don't even remember. That was like back in high school. My first 5e character was a paladin who got one shot by a dragon. Oh, uh, which no. was <laughs> Yeah, it was like 67 fire damage at like level 3. It was awful. Oh my god. <laughs> Six Yeah. At level 3? Yeah, it was awful. Um But that was my first 5e character. I I I honestly don't remember my like first first D&D character. Damn. I, and so it was a long time ago. Well, can you at least describe us your first 5e character? Like, what what, what was yeah, their name? What did they look he, like? God, what was his <laughs> name? Oh, my God. I don't remember his name. Crazy I, last, he was, Mr. TPK. He, he, was, uh, <laughs> he was a human paladin. He uh, uh, was a retribution paladin that they mm-hmm. ended up inadvertently making the sheriff of a town, which was interesting. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah my group did that they performanced me into like the sheriff um that's funny because we have a paladin in our group and we're trying to make him run as governor (laughs) tried to he uh didn't want to do it. he's resisting my most recent paladin was an oathbreaker paladin which is probably the most fun um paladin oath i've ever played that's an interesting one I wish that campaign lasted longer because I really enjoyed playing him. He's a dragonborn uh, Oathbreaker Paladin. What color was he? Uh, black dragon. Ooh, Acid dragon. Nice. My my dragonborn's silver. So he's got ice. Mm, what is a paladin? So a paladin is like a hybrid fighter cleric would be the easiest way to explain a paladin, Kels. He's basically like a religious guy. Yeah super religious <laughs> and racist as tt is yeah <laughs> we like so, we like to give our friends shit because of it <laughs> yeah so in our campaign our our friend he's like you know he he's a a true paladin right and he goes you know monsters and beasts attacked my family so i'm i became a paladin to protect everybody and then we we met some nice like vampires right like they were uh-huh. interested in killing anyone he goes no we have to fight him like stop being beastess or racist <laughs> <laughs> not all beasts are bad <laughs> right <laughs> and it was a homebrew uh it was a uh homebrew humanoid too it was a uh a serpent type uh women who worshipped medusa Mm. Yeah. It was something really niche and specific for a specific island that I had made. Yeah, my two I'm playing a a drow rogue in one. And we're honestly we're ironically both of the campaigns we're doing are centered in Greek mythology. So like one of them That's is awesome. um Theros is our Tuesday campaign, is a is the the Theros module. Mm-hmm. And then our Thursday one is the Thylea module. And for the Thylea one, I am a uh, wood elf, um, circle of the spores druid, uh, who is a demigod. I wrote that because we had the option to be demigods in that campaign. So 
I'm still awaiting when I'm going to get God powers. I feel like it's coming um, because the part right in the campaign, the like, my mother is Athena and that throne's been vacated and I'm supposed to take it over. And we're kind of like fighting through that um, part of the story now. Spoilers. So like, both of the campaigns are like super interesting um, and they've been like able to keep my attention um which sometimes is hard for D and D for a campaign to like keep your attention every hour of every session, but like the oh, two yeah. I'm doing now are they're they're really good at kind of grabbing your attention and kind of holding how, it. How long has the sessions been going on? Um, so by the Tuesday one, we're like four weeks in. Mm -hmm. The Thursday one, we started right after the first lockdown, so like February or March, and we're still going. Mm -hmm. We're like level eight or nine in that one, and we're we're level four on Tuesdays, so. Nice. Well, we've yeah. gotten to the point of the podcast where chat, if you have any questions, please start throwing them into the chat. I like this. I like this part. Yeah, yeah. This is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Kels, suddenly I'm interested. <clears throat> you had Greek guy. I think, I think Kels would fit perfectly in to a D and D campaign. Mm -hmm. It's just like some people have to get over the stigma of D and D's a bunch of nerds in a basement. It's really you know not. I mean? <laughs> Where yeah. we're all streamers just trying to do our best. I mean, Critical Role does that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh God, favorite dinosaur. Um... Yeah, what's your favorite dinosaur? Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. All right. Uh, what? I'm gonna pull an archer. Uh, what are your three biggest fears? <laughs> uh, heights, bees. I hate bees. Um, I gotta think of a third one, man. Uh, I really only have two. I'm like, not a <laughs> heights and bees are my two big ones. Um, I don't know, man. I guess fear of the unknown sometimes. I have a fear of the unknown. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Crazy. What I are love you saying? cinnamon. It's actually my favorite spice. Hot tamales is my favorite candy. Um, I could do. I could do cinnamon all day, every day. Favorite indie game. What's your favorite indie game? What up, Joker? Favorite indie Joker? game, like of all time. Um, sure. You can give us an all time, and you can give us a this year. <laughs> so currently my favorite indie game is rain on your parade which is an xbox game pass game if you haven't played it you're missing out uh you play as a rain cloud and you just rain on it <laughs> i'm on board already that is it that's the game you're literally a rain cloud and you just go around and you rain on everything it's i want to like... do that i want to play that game right now <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah you see that great game you see that car right there is that car right there fuck that car let's rain on it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's up joker uh so that's probably like my favorite one i've played this year mm -hmm. um i really like among us and i don't get enough opportunities to play it because it's hard to find like 10 people that want to play on like a weekly basis but among us is like definitely up there for me right now uh and i guess i don't know is fall guys considered an indie game i, I guess yeah. fall guys is right. fall guys is up there too Oh my God! Rain on your prey. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look it up. Joker. Also, hi, Joker. What's up, dude? <laughs> uh, <Reach. laughs> yeah, Chat. we're going to uh, have to take a collection just to get Kells an Xbox. Yeah, it's it's gonna be uh, pricey. Eight hundred plus dollars. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna go to the pawn shop. She's getting a a, 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 yellow, a white one. <laughs> She's getting a three sixty. <laughs> yeah. That's probably just need a, probably just need a regular Xbox One. You don't need a Series X to play those games. Yeah. Xbox Xbox doesn't make you buy the current console generation like somebody You're else. You're right. You're right. <coughs> Sony <coughs> or was it Nintendo? <laughs> no, no, it was Sega or Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo does do that now. <laughs> hey, but at least they make money off of their console compared to uh, X, uh, Microsoft and Sony. They don't make any money off their consoles. They sell them oh, at yeah. a loss. Oh, yeah. 100%. Guys, don't forget it's... to send in your questions. Uh, Toxic, do you have any questions for us? Uh, well, crazy. I heard you like mead, so I really <laughs> like craft beer. 
I'll be so, back. What's your yeah. uh, what's your favorite uh, what's your favorite meadery? Uh, so I haven't well, <coughs> I haven't dabbled too much in actually trying other people's mead. I mainly do my own. Okay. But there is uh, a guy close here. He uh, sells it at the uh, they call it Showward Forest. It's like a Renaissance fair. And it's Thor's mead that his name's Thor. And he makes his some of the best Thor, mead. Of course. of course his name is he Thor. He makes some but... of the best mead on the face of the earth. But you I'm can only get else. it if you know him or if you're in South Texas. Okay. Favorite oh, city in Skyrim, I see Shady Joker asked. Um, and then also my favorite shirt. Um, God, I have a lot of favorite shirts. Um, favorite city in Skyrim is probably is it is it Winterhold? I feel like Winterhold was the name of the Skyrim city. It's really bad. Does sound like I, a Skyrim city? Because I just played probably Winterhold or White Run. Um, there's also my favorite shirt. I have a lot of favorite shirts. Also, um, mm -hmm. what's up? I, I was gonna say once you're done with that. We also want to know if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, probably flight. I would want to fly. That'd be pretty sweet. So a little for... thing in life that makes me big happy. <laughs> um, my dogs are probably the little thing in life that makes me big happy. <laughs> right. Li dogs. Life would be unfair without puppies. Yeah, my dogs and my awesome wife. I have not seen Invincible yet. Um, oh, dude, I it's like, so fucking good. I like. Oh my I'm God. holding off on it just because everyone keeps saying to watch it, dude. Like, I gotta wait till the hype dies down. It, it's just like the boys. It like exactly. <laughs> so so for the people in chat, right? this is a meet I currently have going on that I'm probably gonna bottle in the next couple of days. This is from his first batch. It's a or a second. It's a strawberry. Nice. Or no, this is peach. I don't like how that one came out. No, this is a yeah, peach one, peach. not the strawberry one. Yeah. So Spartan, my favorite kind of music to listen to is literally anything except for country. Like, <laughs> I I'm not so, picky about my music. I just don't like country. Music. When you say country, what are you talking about? Like all country music. All country music. So you you hate Texas country? I yeah, man. Like I just don't. It's not my I, thing. It, and that's the end of the I stream. I hate anything guys. that plays on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> if it like look, I don't mind if people like it. It's just not for me. <laughs> Honestly, you have you have to be in a country mood to listen to country. Yeah, like well, that, I, I that, that's really it. I, new mood who dis? Because I don't have that mood. <laughs> <laughs> See, Texas country is all about getting drunk and stoned. So. It's like, okay. <laughs> Hell, even Aaron Lewis sings about getting drunk and stoned, and he's not even from Texas. I've, I've, I'd have to know a band, Kells Bells, but like, I'd, I'd probably listen to Swedish punk music. Like, I'm not. Yep. <laughs> probably. I mean, I listen to like J-pop, so like, I feel like any of those international musics are similar, I suppose. I mean. I'm trying to think. I've actually I listen? Go ahead. I've seen Daft Punk live, NJ. I've seen them <gasps> live. What? Yeah. Wait, wait. T 2007. Ooh. Lollapalooza. You saw in the heyday then. One of the nice. best concerts I've ever seen in my life. It, they were amazing. It was great. I wanted to see them live. Worth it. I went to Lollapalooza for one day, and that was the day I went specifically to go see them. <laughs> and it was worth badass. every penny. It was a great show. What songs did they play? Do you remember their set list? Uh, they mashed up everything. So they mixed oh. together two songs for every... Every song was like two songs put together. So it was like so their like, Alive 2005 tour where everything yep. was mashed together? Yep. Nice. Yeah. I'm sorry. So we're going to have to rename Kel's Dennis. She's a menace in the chat. No, nah, she's good. She's good. She good. <laughs> you be you. I don't mind. Chat. I'm like, okay, I'm so an open what book. about sea shanties? 
Uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like, Sea Shanty is an Assassin's Creed, or like... Those are pretty, those are, those are actually real ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't mind those. Like, they're fine. But yeah, like, music, in terms of music, like, I'm not, I'm not very picky. Like, I'll listen to all, I'll listen to EDM, I'll listen to the... I listen to most of the stations on um, Sirius XM. I like like Alt Nation, BPM, Lithium, yeah, um, XL was it XL Turbo, like the metal channel. I listen to like XMU, 90s on nine. Like I listen to the Sinatra station. Like I literally, music is. I'm like so not picky about music except for country for whatever reason. I just don't like it. Be toxic. Did you yeah. know that the Turbo Channel on XM Radio is actually classic rock? Is it considered classic it's, rock? That's, it's classic rock. That's awful to me. Oh yeah, no, I almost, I almost Arsh. drove off a cliff when I heard that <laughs> they said here where we are. They were like, "Okay, we're gonna listen to some classic rock now," and like the station my dad listens to, right? You know, the '80s classic rock and then they start playing nirvana on it i'm like nope i'm driving off the cliff (laughs) favorite lincoln park song is probably in the end i really like that song i've always really liked that song didn't even matter (sighs) yep that's a good song yeah it's a good song do you have any questions for us uh well i was asking crazy about mead oh yeah Um, so he likes thor's mead he also um, makes his own. He does. That's fair. Um, I do not make my own. I know one of my friends' friends makes his own, but I do not make my own. Uh, favorite official millennial? Oh, damn. Kells is in here stirring the pot. <laughs> <laughs> favorite uh, Zoomer in chat. That's, that's definitely Kells. That goes to Kells. <laughs> what's your... Uh, Peach, what's your favorite... Um, Nintendo game of all time because I see you playing on your Switch, and then I'll answer these other questions that are all for me. All time, it's it's oh yeah, Ocarina of Time. Okay, that's a good one. That's that'd be right up there for me. So definitely a good one. Like that that has a lot of replay value for me. I can I can replay that for days. Favorite Zoomer in chat has to definitely be. Uh, Yami. Ooh. Where is Yami anyway? I've never seen Yami in this chat. I think they're only <laughs> favorite <together>. brand of <laughs> chips. Uh, Cooler Ranch Doritos for me is probably. Although I do like the Lay's salt and vinegar chips a lot. Those are really good. Yeah. Mm, yeah, those are good. We're talking about that. Kettle Cook salt and vinegar is just the best chip ever made. I can't. I can't remember the name of that brand, but it's like got the lighthouse on it. Like those are my yeah. favorite Kettle oh, Cook yeah. salt and vinegar chips. Those are good. Those things they hit different. <laughs> they just they hit different. <laughs> I like I, I like salt and vinegar, but salt and pepper kettle cooked is where it's at for me. Yeah, I, I I just like how Kells is being the stereotypical uh, zoomer and trying to cancel somebody right now just because they didn't like it. <laughs> but didn't like what? <laughs> to, like crazy's answer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Automatic cancel somebody. Um, what other questions do I have? I should have prepared questions. I didn't have. I didn't. Pre- I didn't. Uh, I wasn't a good streamer. Um, <laughs> what's your okay. favorite game of the year so far, Peach? And or crazy? What are your? What are both of your? What's your game of the year contender? We're halfway through twenty twenty one. So oh, for this year. Um, yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> there have been a lot of good games that have come out this year. So. Oh, a lot of good games. <laughs> I haven't played any so, of the new games this year. <laughs> I was going to say the. Most recent game I've ever even played is probably Pokemon Sword. And that's still a little old. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say the new uh what it goddamn my mind just went blank. Resident Evil. Uh, I, I, yes, I just, Resident I just Evil downloaded just it. because of the memes. I haven't played just it yet. Just because of the memes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play it. It's gonna happen. I want to play and, it. And bad. the main character's name's Ethan, so it Fair. wins automatic. I've heard, I've had like three or four people tell me that that was their game of the year so far. 
Um, it looks beautiful. It looks amazing mm -hmm. on the video. I'm gonna have to buy it. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm I'm gonna have to buy it. Um, for my game of the year, oh my god, this is tough because the only thing I've played the past couple of weeks is Rocksmith, so I can like learn. But I have spent some considerable time in Outward recently, but I don't think that came out this year. <laughs> But my favorite game of the year game that was announced as game of the year was Arkham City. Okay. And that was a while back. I I was um ironically really enjoying the medium um a lot more than I thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't played Village yet. I've watched a few people play it and it looks really freaking good. Um but Returnal right now is probably my even as hard as it is. It is probably my like that's my pick until I play something different. I mean, there's other games I'm really excited for that I I think could potentially win it. Um, but like I feel like it's going to be a PlayStation game again. I just don't know what it's going to be. It will not oh, be yeah. the Last of Us Part Two. It's going to be right. Spider Man. Oh hell, it's going to no. be Miles Morales. Last of Us Part no, Two was Miles literally Morales, a DLC. I loved Miles Morales. Don't get me wrong, but like for me. <laughs> That could have been a 10 hour DLC to the original Spider Man game, and it would have been just fine. It didn't have to be a. It, it ha I had what I call Fallout New Vegas syndrome. Oh. Like, Fallout New Vegas should have just been an expansion to Fallout 3. Um, there's no reason to give Fallout New Vegas and make it a full game. Like, they got too ambitious with that, in my opinion. But. Yeah. yeah. So. Definitely, we need to play Among Us on the new Xbox mm -hmm. or the new PlayStation because evidently that load time would just disappear. Yeah. <laughs> we, were playing, it, we were playing like what last week, and it was just, it was literally like a 10 minute load into the game. Oh, really? Oh, fuck that. I haven't even played I, the new airship. I don't know what my dog is barking at. Well, I think it's about time to wrap it up. But Toxic, yeah. we do have a tradition here where the sure. guest gets to choose who we raid. So, oh, man. Let me go look. Who do we got? Uh, let's pull up the twitchy twitch. It's so twitchy. I'm going to lag? <laughs> I'm going to rock around here, rock around this rock around. It's twitchy. Yeah, yeah, it's twitchy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could not I do it. <laughs> I remember being young and playing SSX Tricky, right? And that was the song that I always played because, you know, the game's SSX Tricky. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I grew up, I learned that that song was not made for that game. <laughs> <laughs> you learned the real reason for the song. <laughs> What's Demandra playing? Is she playing a horror game? Looks like she is. Yeah, get Twitchy in here. Take there off your go. pants. How long has she been? Oh, God, she's on five hours. That's probably too long. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be ending soon. <laughs> get on the floor. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, ooh, that's a long one. It's time to get Twitchy Luganman? in here. Lugaman's playing Phasmophobia. How long has he been going for? Oh, my God. I still haven't. Oh, whoops. I still haven't played Oosh. Phasmophobia. He's only going for an hour and a half. We'll raid Beluga Man. Let's, he's a super. He's from East Canadian. He's awesome. Are hey. links allowed in the chat? Um, uh, post their username. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah. Let me... But make sure it's the right username. Yes. Right, Peach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I goofed up last time. Uh, he's super nice, dude. I Don't... like him a lot. I've never met a mean Canadian, so... If I could paste it, that would be great. That is his username. He's only been going Ooh. for an hour and a half, and he's looks like he's playing Phasma. Oh, good, he's not playing it solo. He's playing with three people, so he's got a group. That'll be fun. Dope. That's I was actually just playing way. Phasmophobia with another streamer last night. That's How'd one that game go? I really do want to play. It's I want to play that. Oh. And then what was that game that Cage was playing, where he had to control the hands? Oh, 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 Surgeon Simulator. No, it, it was the other one where you have a gun in front of you and the objective is to kill the per the other person. I have never heard of this game. I, I I forgot the name of the game, but you can only control one hand and each 
key huh. does a controls a different thing. Oh my god, that'd be really fun to play, crazy. Huh? M- maybe that would get so frustrating. Maybe we should get a couple people together and play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, while I'll we're play doing that. We Kels, just I'll play out. Phasma with you. Like you just let me right. know. Well, shout out that next week we're actually going to be playing Smash here with mm. Joker and a few other streamers. Uh, if you are interested, so if anybody wants to actually be join the crew in uh, Smash with us, let us know in Discord. Toxic, when are you streaming? Uh, Friday. Friday. I will be back Friday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Perfect. I expect each one of you, each and each and every one of you to be here on Friday at 10 a.m. to support our buddy Toxic. He's been awesome. Yeah, no, this is a lot of fun. I had a great time. I really did. Guys, thank you for being here, Toxic. It's been fantastic pleasure. I, I hope that we get to game soon, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Always down. You just send me a message on Discord. You know where to find me. <laughs> Definitely. Crazy. Do you have anything to plug? uh we're playing smash next week and don't <laughs> worry i'm probably the worst player alive i haven't played in like over a year and a half so i need to start training again oh kels is a kirby main who spams, who spams down, down b, down b. <laughs> Perfect. Kels, i'm a kirby main that does hammer i just hammer everybody <laughs> <laughs> he likes he likes to hammer everyone <laughs> I just want to say thank you for being here and talk to the guys. It's awesome. Yeah, no problem. I was happy to do it. There we go. Let's go say hi to Blue.